It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. You're listening to us in your neighborhood, from coast to coast, and around the world. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Joan Herman, author, speaker, and your host. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Joining me is Dr. Deepak Chopra, a pioneer of integrative medicine. Dr. Chopra is here to teach us how we can make our genes work for us in order to achieve optimal health and well-being. He's the author of more than 80 books, many of which have been New York Times bestsellers. His new book, Super Genes, is co-authored with Dr. Rudy Tanzi. Welcome, Dr. Chopra. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, yes. Thank you very much for having me. Dr. Chopra, I am so happy to have you on the show. And before we begin, I, I want to take this opportunity to thank you and to let you know that your work has had a profound impact on my life. In recent years, I went through some challenging times, some times of real darkness, and your work helped me to get through that difficult period. And I, I just want to thank you for that. Well, thank you. It's always nice to get that feedback, and it encourages me to keep doing what I'm doing. Dr. Chopra, in your new book, Super Genes, you discuss science that is changing lives. I mean, we've all been taught that genes are fixed and unchangeable and that what we're born with, we keep for life and, and things are pretty much set for us. But you teach that genes are fluid, dynamic, and responsive to everything that we do. So what does that mean? that genes are fluid, dynamic, and responsive. Okay, so you know, there are certain genes that are fixed, uh, such as genes for blue eyes, or genes for a particular trait, or some genes that are called fully penetrant mutations, which means that they are fixed, but that's only 5% of the total amount of genes in your body. So 5% of disease-related gene mutations are fixed. That means they are relatively rare. So uh, the gene that Angelina Jolie had, the gene mutation, that is a fully penetrant gene. Uh, the gene for, uh, say, Down syndrome is a fully penetrant, penetrant gene. But the remaining gene, uh, gene activities, are influenced by almost every experience, sleep, meditation, stress, or the absence of stress, personal relationships, emotions, so love, compassion, joy, equanimity, have an upregulate your genes, which means stimulate the genes that are useful for healing and self-regulation, and downregulate the bad genes, which cause too much inflammation, heart disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and many types of cancer. So that is the big discovery, that your genes are there, some of them are fixed, but most of them are not in their activity, and they're influenced by how you think, how you feel, even how you speak, how you act, how you behave, your emotions, and what is very important for your people listening to your show, by your attitude. Your, it determines the activity of your genes. The reason we're calling this book the super gene book is that it's not just the genes, but also what happens epigenetically. So around your genes, there are certain proteins that um, are influenced by environmental factors, including including your internal environment, which is your thoughts and feelings. And this epigenome, as it's beginning to be called, it influences the activity of genes as well. So there's a second component to our genetic activity, which is called epigenetics. And then there's a third component, and that's called the microbiome. It's all the bacteria in your body, which outnumber the human cells 10 to 1. But if you can't count the genes in these bacteria, then for 
you have 3.3 million bacterial genes that um, uh, are there for every 23,000 human genes. So there's 150 times more bacterial genes in your body, and they are actually the ecosystem of our planet. And when we destroy the ecosystem of our planet, we're actually hurting our own genes. And if we, can, if we do that through pesticides or uh, insecticides or petroleum products, or even genetically modified foods, then we are in a way destroying the ecology of our own body because those bacteria that are part of the planet recycle through us. And the overuse of antibiotics has done quite a bit of damage already to the microbiome in our body. In our book, Supergenes, we explain how every experience, thoughts, feelings, emotions, speech, but also, you know, the daily things that we do every day, eating, breathing, digestion, metabolism, elimination, how we experience the world through our five senses and our inner world of thoughts, feelings, emotions, how all of that influences these three parts of our super genome, as we are calling it, the genetic behavior, the epigenetic behavior, and the microbial behavior. And so we're very excited because none of this has been put together in the past in the way for the general, in the way we do, have done for the general public. Doctor, listening to you, it's so interesting to think that five percent are fixed and ninety-five percent are changeable. I know people that are sick; they suffer with heart disease, depression, high blood pressure, diabetes, things that have been in their family, and their attitude is. There's nothing I can do about it. It's almost like they reconcile themselves to a bad situation and feel powerless. So talk to that person. How do you explain that he or she is not destined to live this life? Yeah, if you have diabetes, if you have high blood pressure, if you have heart disease, if you have inflammation in your body, if you have autoimmune illnesses, um, there are more than 95% chances that you can not only prevent it, but you can reverse some of the, these diseases. The evidence for heart disease is already there. We are building the evidence for other called chronic illnesses. We have a program at our center called Perfect Health, where uh, people um, go on a special diet. They also change their microbiome through oils and massages and diet. They learn to manage stress. Um, through meditation. They learn the habits of good sleep and movement and breathing, and we can see a shift in their genome in less than one week. So um, uh, most of chronic illness is not only preventable, but now we are learning um, reversible. So doctor, let's simplify this. If my mother had heart disease, I may tend to believe that I am at a higher risk and, and I will have heart disease. But let's say my mother was obese and she had a very bad outlook on life and, and perhaps was depressed. It's more of the behavior that I would pick up from my mother and bring into my life that would cause my heart disease than the actual genes that I would get from my mother. Right. This is called epigenetic transfer, which can happen uh, in the next generation it may predispose you to certain risks in terms of chronic illness, but it's not predictive. Your lifestyle still determines whether those genes will be activated or not. Doctor, you write in your book that cells know what to do. They make the right choices. They seize what's good. They avoid what's bad. They stay focused. They adapt. They draw upon nature's intelligence. But we go against everything that we should do or what our cells would do. Why do you think that happens? What is the disconnect between what is good for us and what we do? I think you've, uh, you know, you summarize it. If only we could live like ourselves. If our cells live that, that way, why can't we? And the reason is our mind is overwhelmed by information. Our mind is overwhelmed by media, advertising, opinions. Our mind is overwhelmed by the attitudes of society, and this conditioned mind influences 
uh, behavior, which is actually um, a, against everything that our cells already know how to do. So first of all, you have to get rid of the conditioning that you have. And for that, you have to actually, you know, you can't get rid of a bad habit by just trying to get rid of it. You have to actually embark on new attitudes, new emotions, new thoughts, new way of speaking, new way of relating to others, new way of uh, interacting in personal and social uh, relationships. And if you do that, you can see within one week the effect on your gene expression. Doctor, what is the radical wellness that you and Dr. Tanzi write about in your book? Radical wellness means not only um, the absence of disease, but a state of perfect balance where you experience a joyful and energetic body, where you experience love and compassion in your heart, where you experience a rested, alert mind, and where you experience a lightness of being or the state of flow. And what are the categories of change that you recommend to achieve this? The categories of change are at every level, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, and also uh, in our interaction with the environment and with other people. Doctor, for people like Ruth in your book who work very hard at health, they exercise and eat well and manage stress, why do these people still get sick? What's happening when they're supposedly doing everything right? Yeah, they do everything right out of anxiety, out of um, uh, outcome orientation, and in fact, they try too hard instead of allowing things to happen in a natural way. So whenever you become compulsive about anything, you're actually doing more harm to yourself. Yeah, you should allow nature to unfold itself. Exercise is enjoyable up to a certain level, but if you do it in spite of the fact that you're stressing out about it, you will damage yourself more than benefit. And the stress of changing habits can overwhelm you, even if those habits are good habits. So everything should be done in moderation, in balance, and out of a sense of enjoyment. Doctor, we can see the direct impact on conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes, or obesity. But what about the healing of cancer? How much power does this information offer us? Well, we do see what are called spontaneous remissions. And these can only happen in those people where there are multiple factors in the environment that have led to the mutation that has ultimately given rise to cancer. So right now, actually, we are doing a trial on breast cancer patients in our in our center, and we let you know what the results are. But you know, again, in breast cancer also, there are five percent of gene mutations that are fully penetrant. The rest should be influenced by lifestyle. Since no one has looked at this in the past, uh, I think it's now time that we start looking at it, knowing uh, what we know about epigenetics and microbiome and gene expressions. The book is Super Genes, Unlock the Astonishing Power of Your DNA for Optimum Health and Well-Being by Dr. Deepak Chopra and Dr. Rudy Tanzi. If you would like to get more information about the book or Dr. Chopra, you can visit his website, DeepakChopra.com. Dr. Chopra, in our final moments, if you could sum this all up, what would you like to leave our listeners with? Take care of yourself. Um, you are a very unique expression of the total universe. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself. Nourish yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually. And then do the same for others. And if you do that, you will enjoy a very healthy, happy, long life. Dr. Chopra, thank you so much for being here with us today and for sharing this life-changing information and for providing this reminder of just how powerful we really are. Thank you so much. It has been an honor to have you here. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. 
Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7. Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. for joining us today. We hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.